Hi everybody, it's Chris Dunaway again, and now that we've covered the different varieties of citrus trees, we're going to talk about how to pick your individual tree and how to plant it. So, <clears throat> your citrus tree is a long-term investment. The average lifespan of most citrus trees is 50 years, so that's a really long time for a, a tree, especially a fruit tree, to be uh, living and prospering. This picture here is one of uh, two original trees, naval orange trees, planted in 1873 at the uh, Riverside, California campus. So you can see that they, uh, they can far outspan uh, the average lifespan by quite a bit. So one of the most important things when you're choosing your citrus tree is to pick the correct site. I mean, it's so important that uh, one of the uh, axioms that we use in the horticulture industry is always right tree, right place. That's so important because think about it, the soil and where the thing is located is kind of the foundation of the tree. So that the foundation uh, of a structure is the most important part. The foundation of your tree is the soil that it's growing in and the conditions that it's growing in. So whether your citrus tree is growing in a container or you plant it in the ground, you're still going to need a minimum of eight hours of direct sunlight. So they need good, bright sun. Uh, you're actually producing an offspring. The tree needs lots of energy to make that fruit. If it weren't making fruit, it probably wouldn't need quite as much light, but it takes a lot of energy to make the fruit crop you want. It does need excellent soil drainage. Citrus trees are, come from regions where they are, have loose soil that does not um, get very boggy, you know, we have very thick, heavy soils that when they get wet, they turn into mud. Uh, citrus trees don't necessarily like that. They want to be in a place where the, the water quickly drains away and the roots have a chance to dry out and get that air exchange in the soil. You need to have pretty good fertility. So again, you know, you're pr producing a fruit, you're making a crop, the, it takes a lot of energy and it's going to need a lot of the nutrients that um, plants need to make sure that that's available. So you can take a soil test that will tell you how much um, of the major and macronutrients are in your soil and what the tree may need. It also needs to have a pH of between six and seven. Again, your soil test will tell you that and you can make adjustments if there's uh, any issues. It does need to have sufficient space, uh, not only to above it, but also left and right. So you wanna make sure you plant it far enough away from uh, buildings or other structures. The, uh, the distance depends on the variety of the tree, uh, things like shade conditions and things like that. So a bigger variety is gonna need more space than a smaller variety. And you'll also need a sheltered location for sensitive varieties. So this is really interesting, this uh, idea about sheltered locations, what you're doing is kind of creating a microclimate. So a lot of times if I go on a site visit, and I'll find that someone has got the tree in the backyard between the shed and the fence uh, where there's a, not a lot of wind movement, movement but it still gets lots of light. Um, things like that uh, can be heat sinks and other things like that to protect the plant and really keep it from uh, suffering the extreme heat and, and cold, of course, is what we're worried about primarily. So, as we mentioned, drainage is very important. There are a few things that you can do to improve the drainage. First of all, you can create a raised mound about 12 to, eight, 12 to 18 inches high. So you could, uh, so you're just basically creating a mound over the native soil. You want to try to use something close to the native soil, so some, some topsoil or something like that. You, want, you don't necessarily want to use the pure compost or something like that because you want to keep it similar to what's already there. But you build it up 12 to 18 inches tall. You go ahead and plant your uh, tree right in the middle of it and go ahead and water it and take care of it like that. So at least, for you wanna make it pretty wide too. You wanna to make it about the width of the future tree growth. So if it's gonna be about 12 feet, uh, 12 feet wide, you wanna have six feet of that mound on either side. So you really wanna have a pretty big mound so that as the roots go out, they'll be above that water table. You can add sand and organic matter to increase drainage of your of current soil. Now. If, if you're planting your tree at the bottom of a hill where all the water goes, that's really not going to help. But if the, if the soil is high enough, the elevation, so that the, the water does have somewhere to go, 
you can really just improve the soil structure uh, with, the, with the sand and the organic material to loosen up that heavy clay. And you can use a raised bed to grow your trees in. It doesn't have to be very tall. Again, these are about 12 to 18 inches tall. So this is gonna hold the soil in and keep it above that, uh, that native soil and that, that heavy water. So when you're choosing your type and your variety, there's a couple things you're gonna base it on. It's like, what fruit do you like? You know, you're not going to choose a grapefruit tree, tree um, grapefruit, if you like oranges. If you just, uh, so, and, or if you hate um, satsumas, you're definitely not going to choose a satsuma tree. You do want to choose um, a tree based on the amount of space you have. So if you have a very large space, you can pick some of these uh, larger varieties. If you have a uh, very limited space, you can pick different varieties, but you can also pick uh, trees that have, are grown on dwarf rootstock or things like that to make the tree smaller. So there's lots of things that they've done to uh, control the size of these trees. And of course, controlling, growing things in containers also helps keep things to a minimal size. You also want to pick a tree based on the uh, expected low temperatures, the extreme low temperatures. So you want to make sure that you have a tree that can handle that temperatures that you're going to experience. Of course, you can containerize them and move them in and out of the uh, orangerie if you'd like, but in general, if it's going to be outside, you have to make sure that it can stand that low temperature. Um, you do want to select a tree that's about two to, four, two to four feet tall with three to four well-developed branches. So, you know, this is a nice little container, containerized uh, plant. Uh, it's got a single nice uh, stem with coming out to three or four branches coming off of it, all at about the same height, so that it's going to make a nice uh, shape. <clears throat> and you also want to make sure that it's a certified disease-free tree. So here in southeast Louisiana, in the New Orleans area, uh, we are dealing with quite a few uh, citrus diseases and problems we're having to worry about. So plant quarantines are established to prevent the introduction of economically important plant pathogens or insect pests into a region where it does not occur. So we're basically trying to keep uh, bad diseases from moving into the state. We're also, unfortunately, uh, stuck with some diseases that we cannot ship out of our state without special uh, permits and, and growing conditions. So when you're going to plant it, if you're planting it in the ground, you want to uh, plant the tree, even in a container, it's best to do it in January through February. Um, you really want that tree to be get established before it starts trying to uh, do that spring flush of growth. We want to, to send, put that most of that energy down into root development before it starts putting energy into leaf development for the summer. Do you want to, um, it helps to water the container, water the tree the day before. You really want to make sure that that, that soil is uh, good and moist. The, the tree has a chance to uh, really soak up and is uh, nice and limber. But it's also going to uh, keep that soil root ball together rather than let it just fall apart when we take it out of the container. You want to dig a hole one and a half to two times larger than the width of the container that it's growing in. But you only want it to, as deep as the original root ball. So you don't want to, when you put the tree in the ground, it's important that the uh, soil level uh, around the tree is at the same level as it was originally growing in the pot. So, and you want that to be all at the same level as the native soil around it. Of course, unless you're using a mound, but you still want this, the surface of that mound or a container, whatever it is, to be at the same level as the original growing conditions. Um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll, after I've dug the hole, I'll go ahead and put the, root, the tree down in there and then make a bridge with a stick or the, or the handle of my shovel, and it should touch either side of the hole and the top of the, uh, the soil where the tree is. So that way you know it's all the same level. If the holes are dug too deeply, then what's gonna happen is uh, you have a chance that they, even if you hold it up and, and fill around, there's still a chance that it's gonna sink down later when, as that soil compacts. And that could lead to all kinds of problems, again, with the root development and things like that. Um, having the roots too deep is never going to lead to moisture conditions and, and other things like that. Um, 
Planting, you can sometimes plant slightly above the soil line. This is, uh, if in heavier soils, it can actually help it a little bit. But primarily, you want it to be nice and flat across um, from the native soil across the uh, planted area. And again, trees that are planted too deeply are prone to disease and, and other root issues. So you do want to check the roots. As these, um, as these uh, uh, plants are growing in these round containers, they send out their roots, and it, when they hit the edge, they're deflected, and they start spinning around and around and around the pot, and they can create a, a webbing that the tree actually cannot extricate itself from. So sometimes you'll, you'll put this whole plant in the ground, and the, you'll pull it up two years later after it's died, and you'll find that the, uh, the, the roots have not changed shape. They're still in, in the exact same shape they were in the original container. So that's probably one of the reasons why the tree died, is it just uh, choked itself out. So you want to remove it from the container. The pot should be, um, the roots should be reaching the side of the pot. So you do want to make sure that the roots are there. If, uh, if there's very little root structure in the pot, there could be another problem with that tree. So loosen the roots to encourage lateral growth. Um, actually, some of the modern research and is they take the, the circle, consider, think of the, 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 when you pull the roots out of, a, out of a container, it makes a circle, and you're gonna take your knife and you're gonna cut straight down on four sides and turn that circle into a square. And here's a picture I just made uh, of a plant I planted at my house. So what happens as this tree is growing out with its roots is it hits the side of this round container they decide to go around and around and create encircling roots. And they're, they're actually gonna trap this tree and keep it from doing the best it can. So I'm gonna take a sharp knife and I'm going to go along and turn this round circle into kind of a square shape. So I just chopped straight through this root that was gonna be wrapping around. And what's, what's happening is you can see all these roots here are lined up and ready to shoot straight into this new soil. Tease this guy out. So, there you go. Now, she's ready to put it in the ground. Very lightly root bound, then you might can just, just break it open a little bit. I would take all of this matted material here on the bottom just straight off though. That, that is not gonna do you any good. Um, if the tap root is curled into the container again, you wanna make sure you, you cut it off. You don't want that big thick root going around. You wanna make sure that it, it can go, it's straighten out. Planting, backfill and watering. So you do want to backfill with the same soil that you took out of the hole. Uh, it just makes it easier. The uh, tree is less confused. If you, if you put in something like a uh, compost material or something like that, you're gonna have this very loose soil that it's gonna get used to. And then it, when it hits that native soil, sometimes it just is too hard and it won't, won't really penetrate very well. So you, you wanna go ahead and use the native soil. It also helps with drainage. Uh, there's no issues with the drainage if you use the native soil. Uh, do not add any fertilizer or amendments to the backfill. So the, no fertilizer and no anything else like the compost or anything like that. Fill the hole to completion. Um, so you fill the hole and then take your hose and you squirt it down in there and you really want it to use the force of the water to settle that soil down. You want to make it go in and eliminate any air pockets. That's important. Once you've done that, go ahead and Fill it again, because you will have some uh, sinking as, the, as that uh, compacts. And then you can go ahead, um, pack it down just slightly. There's no reason to overly pack it. But you can build a berm around the hole with some of the extra soil. Uh, not very close. You're going to build it right at the edge of the, 
of the hole that you dug, not against the tree, but out. Uh, just use whatever soil is left to, to build it up. And what that will do is as it rains or you water it in, it will help um, hold that water and direct it down into the uh, root zone. After, after you're done, you can add a two to three inch layer of good organic mulch around the tree. So just about whatever your favorite um, mulch material is, uh, shredded leaves, things like that, it work, work really well. And again, do not fertilize for the first six weeks after planting. So you're wanting to encourage this plant to put out roots. Any fertilizer that you add right now could, could actually damage these newly growing, very delicate roots that are coming out. And also, if it did manage to pick up this nutrient, it's really gonna start concentrating on growing leaves and things, and like I said, we really wanna make sure that it's putting its energy into root development first. Um, you can fertilize with about a half a pound of triple eight or triple 13 six weeks after the planting. Or you can follow the soil test recommendations. Uh, so you may not need all of these nutrients. There could be some of them available in your soil, which uh, means you could really cut down on some of that. You will need nitrogen, that's one of the important elements you will always need to add. So just have your soil test and check that. Now here's something that's really a bitter pill for some people is that actually you're supposed to remove the fruit for the first year. Uh, sometimes people will say the first two years because really what you're trying to do is again make that energy go into uh, the root development. So the fruit production uses a lot of resources. So it takes a lot of energy and for, for the first year should be taken away and, and put into the help, uh, helping the tree develop good roots and better um, limb structure as well. So sometimes you may need to stake the tree. A lot of your citrus containers, uh, citrus trees will come with a little stake. You can see it's kind of stuck uh, here, the, the wooden one. I, I bought one the other day, it had a little metal stake in next to it. You, you can leave that in, but I like to go ahead and take it off first and then maybe put it back later. I wanna make sure that I've loosened up the bindings that it's had since it was young and, uh, and have a chance to, uh, for it to, to stretch its legs, I guess. So many times you do wanna make sure you take that out. So, Cause so many times I've come along and, and found that metal pole buried in, you know, basically uh, encased in a tree and you'll never be able to get it out. So make sure you cut that out. But you can use a single stake, you can use a, a a dual stake system or a three stake system, depending on where the tree is. If it's very, in high winds, you probably use a three stake system. So it's like uh, you know one, two behind you. If it's uh, two stakes, they're parallel with uh, some bindings across. Uh, I think I have a graphic of that right here. So and again, make sure that you use, um, keep, the, keep the bindings somewhat loose if you can. You don't want them to be super tight. Uh, it's best to use some kind of little hose material or something like that that can make the string wider so it doesn't cut in. And again, please, please, please remove all your bindings as the tree grows up. Uh, there's no reason. You're just putting them there long enough for the tree to put its roots out and stabilize itself. Once it does that, they're no longer needed. So thank you. I hope you uh, learned a lot about getting your tree into the ground and, and having it ready for planting. So there you go. You can. Now get your own tree and plant it for yourself. Thanks.